Hello! This is Samsa again from GamingOnLinux.com and today I'm playing Crown Bounders. So this is another game that has been sitting on my to-do list for a long time actually because this game was... Uh, this game got out of early access a really long time ago I think. It has been uh, sitting on my Steam account for a while now. I played it a bit in the early access but back then it was so broken that I couldn't play it, but now that it's out, and as you can see it's well uh, beyond version uh, 1.0, I can probably uh, give you an idea of what this game is. So, uh, what exactly is it then? Uh, it's a mix of turn-based strategy games and CCGs, meaning uh, uh, collectible card games. So you basically gather these uh, cards, basically which are your uh, abilities and you use them uh, in your um, battles on the uh, in the turn based strategy uh, th thingy basically you um, imagine imagine civilizations uh, without the whole uh, research and construction things and stuff like that basically just the combat and uh, mix some ccg in there so um Without further ado, let's just uh, let's just take a look at what exactly is it. So first of all, I'd like to take a look at the decks. So basically, this is where um, where you build your tech decks. So as you can see, I have two here. I have my custom deck and I have a beginner beginner deck. So if I can edit this. I can go through what these uh, all cards uh, do, and I can also swap cards and. These cards also get unlocked when you play the campaign missions. I'm not sure how the multiplayer works in this uh, 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 with uh, with the card collection thing because I, as far as I know, there is no central server. So all of the uh, deck management is done on your computer. Uh, that's as far as I know. I could be completely wrong here, but. Um, Anyway, you unlock these different cards when you play the campaign, and these cards have different effects. Uh, mainly just, you know, some, are, some of them are direct, like this one for example. So this gives you a combat advantage, basically a die modif uh, modifier. So uh, this game uses dice, by the way, so, um, so that's if you are wondering that. And this, uh, this is the extra fuel card, this gives uh, our wheel, tracked and hover units 2 plus uh, movement speed. And then there are support related things like foraging for example, which will, uh, which will inherit a supply zone, basically that gives uh, units supply. They need supply to, in order to stay fit for combat, and if they are unsupplied for, uh, for long enough they start to actually get damaged. So um, there are plenty of tutorials. I have basically played only through these. Uh, it took me over an hour actually to actually learn these uh, different things because this game is quite complex. And I have played one mission from the human campaign on Arcadia. So there, there are a couple of these, and then there was also there are these two campaigns that I haven't yet uh, unlocked. But I th think we. Well, should we take? Uh, well, let's let's just go for it and play some of the Hyper campaign. So, the, as far as I know, there are just uh, there are two um, factions, and we can of course take a look at this if we. Actually, there are more. There are uh, there there is human, then there's Tarka, and then there's Hyper. And as you can see, this is basically the deck builder. So you can uh, give yourself a nice uh, icon and select which race you are going to use and stuff like that, and then you'll just uh, start selecting these different cards. Yeah, let's let's play some uh, Hiver campaign, shall we? So, uh, I'm going to play this on... this is a quite complex game... Oh, well, let's just go for medium. And, uh, first of all, we get to select our divisional combat uh, command unit, so this basically... Uh, this is what we... Uh, this is basically our command unit. We need to um, keep this guy safe. And uh, 
that we have a couple of uh, different... I don't want this. Can I select something? Yes, I can actually just if I click this again. Okay, so I have... I can use... Uh, so this is a um, mechanized, com uh, mechanized infantry unit, and this is a main battalion unit, and uh, this is a art uh, an artillery unit. So I think I want my divisional com uh, command battalion to be as um, you know as uh, powerful as possible. Uh, technically, this is uh, the artillery is a good thing because that way we can keep it uh, behind our troops. Yeah, let's do that actually, because I don't want to lose my uh, divisional com um, command units. And then we get to uh, basically build our army. So we have a set amount of um, money that we can use to buy, uh, build um, or buy these different units. And we are going to use basically the same set of units uh, over the course of the campaign. So you don't have to buy these uh, again all the time. You can of course sell them and switch, uh, swap them to other units. And you also get money uh, when you play through the campaign. Yeah, I think I want some. I think I want some mechanized infantry in there, and probably some main battle tanks. Do I want just one main battle tank and a mechanized unit? I don't think so. Maybe I should just. Maybe I should just sell this, and get. I can get one of these. This is not good. Uh, no, 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 no. Um. Yeah, I don't think getting one main battle tank and basically no uh, uh, no support units is bad. So uh, let's just get some infantry. I think we can get one infantry and one mechanized infantry battalion. I think I'm just going to get three uh, infantry battalions. That's going to be good enough. I hope. And, uh, okay, so I could, of course, uh, upgrade them to mechanized infantry later, but I can't do that now, I can't afford it. So let's save this, and we start from Ipris Ipriskin, okay. And uh, we can also select our deck if we want to. I think I'm just going to go with the uh, beginner deck, because I know how that plays. So I basically just created that custom deck to... Uh, experiment with the deck builder. So this is the first mission, raid, and uh, this is basically the description. So this is really hard to actually read because, all oh right, I can scroll it this way too. So raiding fleets of Tarka have made planetfall, and our forces are the first to respond. So we need to push them back, I think. So our plan is to capture their landing field and prevent their withdrawal and force them to choose between slow death in the wilderness or a quick uh, quick one at the mercy of a mother's own. So basically we are going to uh, do a counter attack. So this is where we basically select our decks and I think this is a good deck to play with. I haven't unlocked too many cards so I think I'm okay with the beginner deck. So loading, loading, loading. This is taking a while. A lot longer than I remember the other... Okay, now it loaded. So this is basically the uh, description again, so let's just plan our attack. So we have a couple of units here already. So we don't have to rely on our units only, so we can uh, also get some uh, units for each uh, skirmish, but we also get our own units. So first of all you start in the deployment phase, so this uh, basically this game works in phases. So first of all we need to deploy our command unit, so th there we go, and now we... Uh, now we deploy our uh, other units, so you can go there and you can go there and... Okay, so we can't actually support any more units, so we are three out of three. But I think these are okay, so if we can just control all of this, then that's... We, we, prob we probably can, because I haven't uh, seen any allied units. 
yet, so let's just move to the next phase. So this is the or orbital phase, and this is basically where we have to discard some cards. And uh, we do this to gain space superiority. Uh, it's actually a really good thing to have, because that allows us to gain, uh, gain access to a lot of... Um, uh, you know, di a direct abilities, basically things that affect enemy uh, enemy forces directly. So I'm I'm just going to sack a lot of cards for this because I really want the space superiority. And sadly, we are losing a lot of uh, combat cards, so we won't be able to play those cards ever again. And our SS is at 16, so hopefully that's high enough. Okay, so 20 turns remaining. Uh, okay, the opponent has space superiority for this uh, game because they got... They, and they sacked enough uh, cards to get 22 uh, SS, so... Nice. So this is basically the supply and uh, reinforce phase. We probably can't do much here because our units are at full supply and uh, at full forces. So let's just move to the equip phase. So this is where the dice come in. Uh, so uh, to fight with a unit, you need to assign some dice to it. And this uh, this dice basically um, represent the combat ability of that unit. And uh, of course, there are some modifiers. For example, a main battle tank, a tank uh, battalion like this has a higher tech level. And it also has a different weapon. They have different wep uh, weapon systems and stuff like that. So they have uh, higher base stats, and you can also increase them by uh, uh, basically um, uh, directing some dice at them. So, so this is a recon. Your recon units. I don't think I will actually equip them because I don't think they are going to be that effective. So. Uh, I assume the landing site is somewhere around here, so we should probably move there directly. There is an enemy square here, so we might have to take that as well. So let's assign some high, uh, high number dice here to these units, and hopefully that way we can take on the enemy forces if we encounter them. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, you should probably, because this is an artillery unit, they don't need a, a high dice numbers because they are not going to attack directly, they are just going to provide support. Uh, I think I'm just going to assign some uh, low number dice to them. And these units are basically just our backup. Uh, so, what is this? Oh, this is a transport unit, so we could possibly put some... Yes, yes, brother. I hear you too. So this is an engineer. This is interesting because engineer units can do some quite interesting things. Okay, so I'm just going to... Yes, yes, yes. The voice acting with the... Uh... With these bugs is quite interesting. I have just played uh, on the human side for now. Okay, so... Yet, now we get to combat phase, and this is where we basically move our units, so I think this recon unit should... Okay, so what is this? Um, this looks like a... Oh, it's an infantry battalion. Okay, move here and recon this place. Okay, so it's a fortress here. So we should take that before anyone, you know, um, goes in there. So let's just send our tanks over there. Okay, so it seems we have some uh, resistance here, but nothing that we couldn't take care of. It should. Oh, and by the way, you might have heard this uh, sm this uh, noise that uh, basically comes after you. Yes, uh, after these certain units um, move and stuff like that. So. Um, it's an annoying bug that I haven't been able to... Um, by the way, I just picked that unit up just so I can uh, transport it a bit faster. Um, so the, it's an annoying audio bug that uh, happens every time you basically um, move your units and stuff like that. It gets really annoying after a while. 
and it's quite an, uh, quite irritating to the ears. But uh, I haven't found a fix for it. It might be because I use Pulse Audio, but I don't think that should be a reason why it uh, works quite like that. And by the way, this uh, it seems these uh, units are also burrowing units, so we can I can show you uh, the levels of the uh, combat field here. So if I burrow and uh, yes, move. Uh, you might have seen that this actually changed from this view to here. And that means that this unit is underground. We also have this, which basically shows us all our air units, but we don't have any for this skirmish here. So, uh, you can fight uh, on, uh, you know, underground, on the ground, and in the air. And that's... Uh, it's, it's an interesting thing, but uh, we've seen that uh, happen earlier. And I can't move you anywhere, that's quite annoying. Uh, I could, of course... So this is going to give me some artillery uh, support. Might be a good thing to have, considering that we are probably going to get... Well, I don't know, we have quite as powerful forces here. I don't think these guys want to mess with us. Uh, except with this uh, recon unit, which is probably get gonna get uh, pounded to pieces immediately. But I think this is basically it. I don't think I can do much else. So what I could of course do is I could assign some uh, uh, defense. So basically this, uh, if our units get attacked, uh, these units are going to be supporting each other. But uh, we can also do this a uh, bit uh, faster if we just uh, click here and then just uh, set this to auto. So basically they just automatically Okay, so they are actually doing some recon on us. Yep, that uh, support unit is going to get destroyed. So this is basically the combat. It's a small animation like this that happens when you either attack or you get attacked. And of course the units they show here uh, are going to change depending on what you actually have. Okay, so they are trying to kind of surround us. I don't like that. Okay, but I think what they did here was stupid. They moved their artillery unit uh, to my main battle tank. And if I can get enough support, I can probably take it out quite easily. But I don't want to move my units here, because that's going to be uh, basically a support nightmare. So, where is that? Okay, so I have my... Oh, right, I can also bring in reinforcements this way, because I have one card that I didn't use. Okay, but uh, none of these units actually lost men or supplies, so I don't think I have to resupply them at all. So I can just equip them. So uh, this unit is probably going to move here, and I want some forces to move around here so we can surround this uh, artillery battalion here. And naturally I want to get some high dice to actually fight against them. And I might want to surround this unit here, so let's put some uh, uh, put some uh, dice to these two units so we can actually surround this battalion here and you should probably have some dice to defend yourself that's also a thing and you should get some dice to provide support and you to get high dice because I want you to surround this place over here and if the main battle tank doesn't get through then we have two infantry battalions that are going to do that. And you, you don't pro... I don't think you need any dice, you are a transport unit anyway. But you might want some, because otherwise you are going to be quite... Um, uh, you are going to be in a dangerous place if you don't have any dice. So that's, f that's it for the equip phase, so let's actually executes our plan. Oh, and by the way, this... Yes, yes. Uh, this uh, green line here, that shows us uh, our uh, our supply lines, basically. So, uh, this line over here, basically this uh, area here is supported. And that means we get support here and our units won't uh, suffer from any bad effects uh, that happen when you don't have support. 
Yeah, let's let's um, conduct an attack over here. So, oh, nice. These units can also burrow. So basically, that means all our can these burrow actually? No, they can't. Uh, but um, all all my vehicles can apparently burrow um, below ground. So that's a nice thing to have. So what I can do here is what I can basically assign these units to support the attack. In this case, our odds are ten to one in our favor. So that's probably going to wipe out this unit. But I'm not sure if I actually have to have... Yep, these units are actually unnecessary for the attack. Only thing I need is this uh, main battle tank battalion and the artillery. Probably not even the artillery. But um, let's just... Just in case we can do this. We could of course play a card here. This card would just... Uh, give us a die mod, but I don't think we need one, considering we are attacking uh, an artillery unit. And I actually skipped the enemy anim uh, the fighting animation by accident, but we get the combat results anyway, and they, get, they absolutely got wiped out. So what I can do now is I can of course move my units further, probably. Uh, I might suffer from no from no, okay, so I can't actually, th that's a bad idea because, yeah, w well, odds are still in our favor, but I can't guarantee any support for that unit, so I'm not, I'm not okay with that, but I mean, I guess it's, it'll have to do, let's just move our units here and try to push this back a bit, so, by the way, you should probably move a bit as well, I want you to... Uh, unless they have a certain ability, I can probably just sneak this past them. So we could possibly uh, surprise them a bit. So how about attacking this guy with... Yep, 5 to 1. This is in our favor and it's good enough for me. So here's the combat animation again. So you can naturally skip it if you want to. Basically, it's, it's quite simple all the, anyway, so... But I, li I like to watch it because I, um, it's interesting to see what happens, basically. But uh, you, sometimes I just skip it, because I, I you get all the info here anyway. But yeah, we've wiped out some of their units, and uh, we can of course uh, advance. And we can actually, we can actually attack this unit as well, and it's 2-1 uh, to one in our favor. It's not perfect, but uh, based on these results here, we take no damage and they take 2 damage, and uh, they won't... Uh, this uh, shows you also uh, what's possibly going to happen. So if this has an A here, that means our unit can advance, and if it has R here, that means we are going to have to retreat. In this case, the enemy is neither going to ha uh, going to advance nor are we, but they won't uh, retreat either. So maybe if I put a die mod here, maybe we can increase our odds a bit more and maybe do some extra damage. I'm not sure, but maybe. So let's let's do it. Also, they have some support here, so these uh, these units are going to support them. So we might. Uh, we take we might take some casualties, but uh, I'm sure we're okay. So we lost two readiness, and they lost like what? Uh, they lost one here, and then they lost two readiness on the infantry battalion, and our unit just uh, retreated because they it was getting a bit too hot in there. But our our offensive is going well so far. Oh, by the way, this unit is the one with the infantry, right? So we should probably move you over here. So this unit here is uh, quite defenseless, but I might be able to attack that anyway and maybe wipe it out. I'm not sure, but uh, let's hope the... Okay, so, so the odds are 1 to 1. So we might be able to kill the infantry battalion, but we are going to take some damage as well. Okay, so they're... Their supporting unit is almost dead as well. Okay, my readiness went down, so we need to reinforce those guys, but so far their line seems to be doing quite badly. I'm sort of... 
uh, I'm sort of worried about this main battle tank battalion here, but uh, it's just one main, bata uh, main battle tank battalion and this mech in infantry battalion here, and this is just infantry. So I don't think they are going to be able to hold this against all of these units here. But yeah, so next thing would be to actually we can even we can move a bit further. This is interesting. Can I actually provide support from here? I doubt I can. But I can of course move here. It's going to be a bit risky considering that uh, we might uh, have an opening here, but I don't think they are going to use that. So, I'm just going to attack them here and see what happens. So it's 3 to 2. And attacker is going to take 2 damage, that's bad. I think they were on a hill and that basically gave them a defensive uh, advantage. Yeah, and our roll was 4. So that's why it went quite badly. So attacking without support is generally a bad idea. Now we have to just uh, apply the... Okay, so they are... They're giving Sam turrets. Or some... Yeah, Sam turrets, I think. That's the ability they... Okay, so they are using Orbital Bombardment. This is one of those abilities that I talked about. So if you have space superiority... Um, I probably pronounced that quite horribly. Uh, it means that you can use orbital bombardment and things like that, and they are usually quite dangerous things. Okay, so our mechanized infantry is. Oh, is that mechanized? Oh, I think that was the. I don't. Th Maybe that. Oh, that was the transport. Oh, I lost one. Infantry unit. Okay, so they are, they're they're basically owning us right now. I thought we were s standing quite nicely, but no, we are just getting wiped out slowly but surely. Okay, so the, that main battle tank, main, uh, main battle tank battalion was too much for us. So we are, uh, we can summon uh, summon reinforcements here. So that's a thing we should probably do. And we can also uh, reinforce some of these units here. So especially... Uh, all of these seem to be doing fine, actually. Oh, this unit isn't doing fine. But these units are mainly just doing fine. We can probably take that mech recon quite easily with these guys and with their support. So... Also... Uh, I don't like these cards. Uh, Forced March might be a good thing to have, but I'm not sure if it's that good. So what I can also do is I can also discard cards from here. Actually, the Forced March might have been a good idea because we have to march over there, but it's just uh, infantry units, so... It's not that important, but I demonstrated the ability to discard units during phases. So let's move to e equip phase, and I'm going to take out this recon, and then I think it's going to be it. This t game takes quite a long time to actually uh, play for, you know, for play a one skirmish or something like that. It, it depends on what you are going to do, but I, uh, if I play at this pace, it's going to take a lot longer for me to complete this map than uh, you are going to like. So I'm just going to quickly take care of these couple of units if at all possible, and then I'm just going to be done with it for now. And I'm not sure if I should move you guys over there. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, and you... I'm just going to uh, put a lot of small dice to you. You need a six. And maybe I should arm these guys as well, so they can defend themselves against bad guys and you can you get the small dice that were left over okay so that's it and oh I can actually uh, apply that one die okay just just do it automatically you can also set that to automatic so like the computer basically decides for you so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to 
just move my units here and take care of that guy because they left that guy really really alone and I'm going to also organize an attack from here so it's 4 to 1 in our favor odds shift is minus 1 so that means our odds are slightly worse and the enemy unit is going to retreat after this so let's let's do it I think we are doing okay and they are actually going to die from this yep minus 3 readiness so that's it for them and next up we have uh, this unit here to take care of 7 to 1 I think those odds are quite nice I pr I'm probably overdoing it for now but I don't want to take risks I really hate to take risks but yeah that's that unit done and we also got some a returned fire but I don't care so I can probably cut them uh, basically I can probably okay so that might have might not have been the best idea ever can I move my yes I can actually move my units here to support the attack can I actually pull this off it's 2 to 1 in our favor, odd shift is 0. Uh, sadly I can't move this unit anywhere, so I'm just going to have to rely on my infantry units, but yeah, let's do this. And what's going to happen? The enemy is going to take 1 damage, right, and we are going to take 2 damage. And what we can do, of course, is we can... Oh, so they actually retreated. That's not what we wanted to see. And these units are out of range for uh, for supplies, so that's bad. There are some supply points uh, in certain level, several level, levels, so you can uh, get some extra supply by capturing those. There are also victory points, so in some cases you have to hold or capture certain points in the map to actually uh, to uh, a win. You can also destroy all the enemy units usually. And we can't move you, right? No we can't. So it's probably better to just move keep these units here or maybe move this guy over here and move this unit here that means our units are more together but I don't I think that's enough uh, otherwise I'm just going to ramble here for a while because this game yeah it, it takes a long time and it's um, I also suffer from the one more turn syndrome so it might uh, if I play anymore I, I might sit here for the rest of the day so I'm just going to forfeit it yes for the Queen and I have been defeated. And but we got some new units to such decks, so those are probably the units we we encountered. So yeah, we got one, uh, we had some, one supply point and zero of the two victory points. But that doesn't matter. I think I've shown you um, plenty of this game. Of course, it has a lot more in it, and I am probably not the best at it. I tend to be quite bad at uh, everything uh, that's related to card games but um, so this is basically what you can expect from crown pounders apart from the audio issues like um, sometimes there are two audio tra uh, soundtracks playing at the same time it makes listening to the music quite uh, horrible and it also has those weird tss sounds every time you move your units. The, those are really annoying, uh, but uh, otherwise it plays quite nicely. I haven't had any crashes with it. Uh, the early access version had quite a lot of uh, bugs that caused crashes and I lost a lot of game data by uh, basically uh, crashing the game uh, every now and then. But now it seems a lot more stable, so if you like card games and uh, turn-based strategy games, this might be something you should uh, keep an eye out for but um, uh, yeah uh, personally I think it's uh, it's a bit weird to say the least the cards aren't uh, the, the cards are sometimes even a bit odd but uh, 
Yeah, I mean, maybe the f cards further on are a bit more interesting. So far, they haven't been all that neat, and many of them seem, uh, you know, just uh, pointless. Of course, there are some things like uh, recon cards that you can deploy to see things, but some of the cards don't really make any sense, and I haven't had uh, any use from them. But the AI uses them, so of course I have to use them as well. But yeah, that's it for Crown Pounders, and naturally, we will see in the next video.